Good morning, everybody. It's Dave with Alaskan Homesteading. I'm coming to you from Homer, Alaska. We are about to set off on a cabin adventure. We're going to stay over at the uh, Overlook Cabin in Halibut Cove Lagoon for a couple of days. And uh, we're just getting set to load up our gear on the boat and uh, take a ride across Ketchumac Bay. We are going to be riding over to the cove in this boat from Coldwater AK. Crew's not here yet, but just getting an early start, making sure we're ready to go on time. And here we go, taking off with Coldwater AK, heading over to Halibut Cove Lagoon with all our stuff. Firewood, more firewood, water, all our clothes, got our kayak, everything ready to go. The uh, cabins here at Halibut Cove Lagoon have a really nice walkway system and there's even a rolly cart to bring your goods out to the cabin. Well, here it is, the Lagoon Overlook Cabin. After several trips up and down the ramp, we've got our gear all packed in and we're ready to take a break and have some lunch. Okay, well, we've had our lunch, and so now I'm just going to give you a quick little tour of the cabin. Um, I find that a lot of times the cabins here in Alaska, there's not a lot of great information about them, or you don't know necessarily what's there, what's not there, and so on. So I'm just going to give you a little walk around. Uh, so nice door. You can kind of latch it from the inside. There's some good storage shelves down here. Uh, there's a little sink, and that just drains right out the side of the cabin. Seems like the intention is to kind of consolidate the anywhere you might wash dishes. These are camp suds, biodegradable soap. We brought that. And table has a couple of pretty narrow benches, um, so you might want to think about bringing chairs. We did. Uh, just figured they'd be more comfortable than whatever was here. The wood stove looks pretty good. It's a decent size. It's a Blaze King. We've got it running and uh, it does take a little, little bit to get it going. Um, didn't draft the greatest when uh, we first started using it, but now it seems to be going okay. And the little draft control here is on the back. And uh, there's a pretty good amount of hooks and stuff in the area to hang your items. Lots of hooks, nice hanging bar, and more hooks. And there's two kind of bunk rooms. Um, so two, two beds in there and two in here, a little ladder. They've got kind of sort of foam pads, but you best bring your own kind of padding for that. Uh, those, those foam pads are kind of, kind of yucky. Uh, <clears throat> The windows open, they've got screens, so you know you can get a breeze through here if you want to, and uh, not have to worry too much about the bugs. And then in the back, there's a little room which has sort of fire stuff. There's a you know axe and a hatchet. Uh, the previous guests left some enviro logs. Um, we talked to them down at the dock on the way out. They were super nice. Uh, but these, yeah, these things will burn for a while. Handy to have. Don't count on this being here, uh, this kind of stuff. Sometimes previous guests will leave wood, sometimes they won't. Anything that we, any wood that we brought that we don't use is just going to stay here. Uh, but there's kind of assorted cardboard and some logs there. Uh, there's a little saw in the back. And a uh, dustpan and broom. And when we got here, there were a whole bunch of bundles of firewood down by the dock and 
so those those look like they're available for use here. It's there's a sign that says firewood available for purchase at the ranger station. I don't know how how you purchase it because I didn't see anybody there to give money to. But uh, anyway, that's the kind of general walk around of the cabin. And when you come outside the cabin, there's a nice covered porch. So you've got a little bit of outdoor shelter from the rain. Um, little table here, I guess you could put your stove on if you wanted to cook outside. We've got a fire ring down there and a little bench, so that's nice. You could kind of hang out there and enjoy the beautiful views of the cove. Actually, this is the lagoon, Halibut Cove Lagoon that we're on. And this is the Overlook Cabin. And all the walkways are wood uh, all the way from the dock out to the cabins. And they've got this sort of netting on them to make it so you can walk on it if it's wet. It's a little, can be slippery. And uh, this little ramp here leads down to another little overlook. Let's take a look down here. That's nice. Got a little bench. With a spectacular view. Walking up the ramp a little bit from the cabin. You can see the first little outhouse over here on the right. Very simple. Outhouse. And there is a water faucet. They noted on the website that this is not always running. Uh, it happens to be working right now. But that isn't treated water, so it would be advisable always to bring a method of treating water or to bring clean drinking water when you're uh, going to come to one of these cabins. I don't know what this is. Oh, another bathroom. Continuing on along the ramp one of the other cabins and then up here there's the composting toilet closed for composting oh, I guess they have a cycle like left and right another toilet some instructions there oh there's sawdust okay nice This is the Halibut Cove East Cabin. Nobody's in here right now. Nobody's uh, got this cabin occupied today, so I'm just gonna give a quick little walk around in here to show people what's in here. Again, nice little wood stove, bunk bed in the corner, the uh, wood stash, which is pretty well stocked at the moment, and some other little odds and ends. Some. Uh, we left some bug spray and a lighter and all that. And another table with some benches. These benches actually look a little better. They're a little wider, more comfortable looking. And another low bed, which is uh, probably a little better for some people. And I think somebody was saying this one is technically ADA accessible. Um, that has, you know, kind of straight in ramp access there. And then when you come out on the porch, this has a ramp going down here to the little fire seating area. So that's pretty nice. So this is the east cabin.
right as you come to the top of the dock, there's a little covered area which you could use for waiting. Um, if you're you know, waiting for your water taxi, you know, the dock is right down there. Uh, they've got a bunch of firewood. Oh, and there's the pay box. $10 a bundle for these guys. So we'll have to drop a tenner into the box for the, uh, the bundle that we grabbed. And then there's flotation devices for kiddos, because kids don't float. Got a little map of the area back here. And the all-important cart. This thing was invaluable when we were bringing our stuff up from the dock because, man, it is uh, it is a good bit of a walk. Um, even at relatively high tide, the dock and the ramp up from the dock, it, it's, it's pretty steep. So uh, good to have a cart. If you come out here, you might want to even bring your own cart because, uh, I, I don't know, the po people that we ran into said this was the first time they'd ever seen uh, a cart here. And here's a little sign that gives you information. Obviously, Ranger Station Trailhead, and then uh, the different cabins and so on. And now, walk back down to the dock. It's actually a really, really nice dock. Well-maintained. Water off to the side there. And yeah, that ramp is pretty steep, so we had to bring all of our stuff up that ramp, and that cart made it uh, much more pleasant. All right, well, it's dinner time, and we've got some hot dogs here. Cooking in the wood stove. A little harbor seal out there swimming around this morning. Good morning. Well, it is the second day of our trip out here, and we are getting ready to take the kayak out. We brought an inflatable kayak, and uh, we're going to go paddle out across the lagoon and go explore the coastline. If you look over there, we will basically plan to go from the dock, which is back around there, you can't see it, go across the lagoon, and then kind of go along the coastline over there and then back over to here. Looks like a nice calm day. Uh, pretty sunny this morning, which is nice and uh, should be a good little adventure. Now we get the kayak out. We're cruising across the lagoon here. Really super calm day. the dock we came from. I decided to land at this little beach over on the east side of the lagoon because there's a nice little waterfall I wanted to go take a look at. This is the west cabin at the lagoon. There's sort of a beach landing, but it's a bit rocky. So um, <clears throat> the easier way to get here is really by foot on the trail from that same dock that we used. But you could get here if you wanted to uh, from this entrance. And then turning around, this is the view you'd have from that cabin. Pretty nice. There's another nice little beach 
just to the west of the west cabin and on that beach you can access a trail spur that will take you up to the coalition trail there's also a small campsite here as you can see the bear box and there's a picnic table and uh, there's a trailhead sign up in there somewhere too this will just be a nice little spot to camp again gorgeous views of the lagoon from here All right, well, it's day three of our trip out to the lagoon cabin, and we have decided to take a little hike out to Chinapoot Lake. Um, trail conditions are pretty good, uh, he says, stepping into some mud. But overall, it's actually really quite nice. Um, some decent uh, sun today. It's about, I don't know, 45 degrees or so, and... Um, Contrary to what we were told at the um, visitor center and the uh, Chamber of Commerce, no, the trails are not covered in snow and impassable and all these things. Um, maybe some of the higher elevation ones are, like if you wanted to go up to the goat rope trail or something like that, up to the summit there. But this China Poot Lake Trail is uh, in really fine shape. And this is the weekend before Memorial Day weekend in May, so maybe the early spring that we got this year helped clear things out ahead of schedule. I don't know, but it's nice, so we're just going to enjoy our hike. about a mile in on the trail and things are still in great shape. A few little steep sections, a little bit of mud, but uh, it's a really nice trail. Little waterfalls and stuff to look at along the way. Later in the season when everything is leafed out, you know, you'll see this is all Devil's Club, which is a pretty gnarly plant. Real spiky and it creates dense vegetation. And the bears seem to enjoy eating the berries that grow on the Devil's Club. So this trail would definitely be advisable to uh, take appropriate precautions for travel in bear country, whatever your particular flavor of precaution is, because there's a lot of twists and turns and hills along the hike and he could easily startle a bear around here and that would be no good. 
And about a mile into the trail, there's also a nice little lake that you come across. It doesn't seem to have a name or anything. At least I didn't find one on the map. I think we found our first bear sign of the hike. There's some uh, fresh evidence here on the trail. Looks looks pretty pretty uh, fresh. So yeah, it, yeah, it's still yeah. That's from yesterday. Still wet, but not not gooey. Yeah. Yesterday. All right. Mm -hmm. Gotta be careful. Be aware. This China Poot Lake Trail is a really nice walk. There's a few little steep rolling sections, um, but overall it's a pretty well-maintained trail. Not a lot of deadfall and stuff on it. And uh, I mean, you know, see for yourself, it's just uh, really pretty. There's some nice little boardwalk section, which is handy so you're not walking through the mud. As I'm walking along, I'm thinking back to the comments that we got from the folks at the Chamber of Commerce and the Visitor Center about the terrible trail conditions and all the trees that we're going to have to climb over and the snow and the ice and everything else. And it just got me thinking about the experience we often have talking to like park staff that a lot of the times they're making some fairly exaggerated claims. I think that they've gotten in the habit of trying to put the fear of God into people or dissuade people from going out and enjoying some of the things that the world has to offer because they're afraid, you know, people are going out unprepared and don't know what they're doing and all that. The problem with that is you, you can't make assumptions about people's preparedness levels. And I understand there are lots of people that do go out and get themselves in trouble. You know, they're, they aren't prepared and they don't know what they're doing. But that's not a reason to give bad information. And it's not a reason to make up answers to questions you don't know the answer to. What you should do is say, I don't know. But... At this time of year, the conditions are usually this way. Or the last report we got was a month ago, and at that time, the trails were covered in snow, or whatever the case may be. But simply making blanket generalization statements about conditions and really just raining on people's parade, it's, uh, it's not necessary. And I think that the... Uh, park folks should should stop doing that. We've experienced it at so many different places, all the different national parks and other, other places we've visited around the country. It's uh, pretty common. Anyway, just some food for thought. Let me know what you think. I'm uh, interested to hear if other people have had a similar experience that we have in dealing with park staff making dire commentary about the conditions. Well, we're almost at China Poot Lake, and there's a nice little stream running here. Uh, contrary to reports, the bridge here is not out. So we will continue on our way. Well, maybe I spoke too soon about the bridge not being out. This looks like two-thirds of a bridge, and we may or may not be able to find our way across here. It's uh, a little deeper than I feel like walking through. Let's see.
end of bridge. It looks like we might be able to kind of trump our way through there. Get across. You can see the sort of flag, I think, where the trail goes. Nice stream. Well, we decided to uh, bail out of this this little section of the trail here and go a different way. That's just a little too sketchy. Those couple of two by fours spanning that. You can't really tell from the video, but that stream there is about four feet deep. And uh, it's just a little too sketchy for us. Um, rather not uh, slip and fall into four feet of water and spend the rest of the day soaking wet in 45 degree weather. So we're gonna take a little bit different path that will should still take us to uh, the northern edge of China Poot Lake um, on the Coalition Loop Trail. Well, we found a little alternate trail that uh, isn't marked on the map, but has clearly been maintained. There's some uh, sawn off logs and little trail tape markers along the way. So this looks like it's gonna take us out to the uh, sort of northeast edge of China Poot Lake. We made it to China Poot Lake. Just a little cove here in kind of the northeast corner. There's like remains of a cabin a little bit off to the uh, to the left here. I don't know if it's forest service or something old private cabin or what, but there's something here. Nice calm day on the lake. So just for reference for folks who uh, might come this way, this is the last bridge that was any good on the way down to the uh, little campsite next to China Poot Lake. Um, but there's a little spur trail right off here to the right that, uh, you know, it doesn't look like much to begin with, but it's clearly a developed trail. And um, that'll take you over to the shore of the lake, uh, you know, if you want to get a view of it. And that uh, big bridge is still out. This isn't heavy rain. This is just a sprinkle. You know, like they said at the uh, Chamber of Commerce, that's spring hiking in Alaska. We came to a section of the trail that just seems to have hundreds of little birds. I don't know what they are. I don't recognize the sound. But uh, they were just making a whole lot of racket right here. And then they're gone. And just like that, it went from rainy and cool and cloudy to bright and sunny and steamy. Normal, normal Alaska things. Just like a lot of other places where the weather is changeable, that cliche saying holds true here as well. If you don't like the weather in Alaska, wait 15 minutes and it'll probably change. Well, it's about uh, 1.30 in the afternoon and we're almost back to the cabin. Um, the weather forecast from our you know inreach satellite thing said potential for heavy rain starting around 2 p.m. today so I kind of wanted to be back before that but uh, nice hike this little trail out to China Poot Lake is really pretty pleasant it's uh, not too physically demanding there's definitely some short steep climbs but they're fine you know if you're not up in peak physical condition like I'm not then just take it slow and you'll be fine um, and it's not even really a long walk we kind of did it around and went and did some extra which uh, you know I think round trip it's supposed to be about five miles from the ranger station to um, to to the lake and I think we're probably going to end up around seven miles I'll have to check the uh, on X track when we get back and see but I would definitely recommend the hike it's uh, it's nice well right on cue the uh, rain got here just around 2 p.m. just a few minutes after here we're right at the home stretch last few hundred feet before the cabin. This is that little 
camping area down behind the ranger station and the stairs up to the ranger station itself and this is the Catchamac Bay State Park Visitor Center it's not open yet no rangers here but uh, looks like you could stop in and get some nice information when they are here this is a trail report from last July so that's all out of date and some other bear information and here's that sign about the bridge being out so yeah Day. We're just getting cleaned up here, you know, uh, sweep out the cabin and get everything tidied up for the next guests. It's about 11.30 in the morning on Monday. We're uh, just waiting for the water taxi now. They're going to get here probably about noon for high tide. And as we wait, now we have uh, porpoises out swimming. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the camera. But uh, we'll give it our best shot. Right in the center of the frame, there's a disturbance in the water. Give it a second and see if they come up again. We've had porpoises and sea otters and harbor seals and bald eagles and all kinds of waterfowl. It's a really active place. Lots of wildlife. We saw a bear up on the mountain this morning, although to be honest, it was just a black dot moving. So couldn't really say it was a bear, but it's the only thing that it would be. All right, well, we got picked up by the uh, fine folks from Coldwater AK. Pulling out of the Halibut Cove Lagoon and headed back to the Homer Spit.
wrap it up for this trip. We're back in the spit. We're loaded up in the truck and uh, ready for the long drive home. We've got uh, five hours ahead of us, plus I think we'll stop for lunch somewhere. Anyhow, hope you enjoyed this trip with us down to the Halibut Cove Lagoon, and uh, we'll see you next time.